It is important that we all realize the fear and anger the United States was consumed with during World War II, and that we recognize the American citizens who were unjustly treated as criminals because of it. On February 19, 1942, Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, in which over 120,000 American citizens of Japanese heritage were rounded up and forced to live in internment camps, or as they preferred to call them, relocation centers. The word internment means to confine or imprison people, generally of a large group, without trial. This is not the first time the United States has acted on impulse, despite the cruelty of the act. December 7, 1941, toward the end of World War II, Japanese fleet stormed in and bombed Pearl Har Harbor, Hawaii, in the hopes of disabling the U.S. Navy fleets to buy Japan time to absorb the oil and natural resources of the Dutch East Indies, which was necessary to finance their war with China. At this time, America was not yet involved in the war, aside from supplying tanks, food, clothing, oil, artillery, ammunition, etc. to Britain, the Mediterranean, Russia, China, Burma, and many more. Although Japan seemed to have a solid plan and a solid and reliable plan in bombing Pearl Harbor, it failed and only succeeded in provoking the United States to declare war with them. This, being the first time America had been bombed by a country, struck the nation as a whole with overwhelming fear, anger, and uncertainty. Americans all around the country began to accuse any citizen of Japanese heritage of being Japanese spies, even if they were born and raised in the United States and had never traveled to Japan. Burning with hate for the Japanese and not knowing whether or not to trust their own fellow Americans, they deduced that the confinement of citizens with Japanese blood in their veins was the just and necessary solution. Their reasoning was delusional and they tried to justify it by using the excuse that it was for the people's protection from the hostile and malicious citizens who would have otherwise become potential vigilantes. There were ten internment camps spread out along the United States and they stood from 1942 to 1945. Efforts were made to give the internment camps a more civilized appearance than other examples of genocide in the world, such as the leadership of Joseph Stalin or the Holocaust. This included allowing two days to evacuate and sell their property, permitting them to bring along only what they could carry, kept whole families together, allowed for self-education, sports, specific and requested clothing, worship, and provided minimal necessities for survival in terms of nutrition and housing. While this was far more considerate than it could have been, it left them no choice but to basically give up their homes, businesses, and possessions away for pennies on the dollar. Many of the Japanese Americans who had immigrated over did so specifically to have a fair chance at making something of their lives, and this wasn't exactly what they had in mind. Although they were lenient enough to permit fun and games and intact families, the simple necessities were neglected to the point that hundreds, possibly even thousands, died from illnesses caused by inadequate living conditions and lack of medical attention. The exact number of deaths cannot be determined, as no such records were kept in the camps. The houses that they lived in were small, cramped, falling apart, and literally built of nothing more than boards of wood nailed together with huge gaps and even planks. These camps were located in places where it was often far too cold in winter and too hot in summer. And under the circumstances of their housing, they were, not, they were very susceptible to illnesses that were not properly treated. Over time, Japanese Americans in some camps thought resourcefully and built on their own military style barracks as their as their homes. This was a much needed change as their housing beforehand was as useless and uninsulated as the horse stables and race tracks that they were originally living in. However, this didn't take away from the insolence of the grudgingly ignorant Americans who, after having just forcefully removed innocent citizens, even World War One veterans, and their Caucasian spouses from their rightful homes, then expect the internees to grow and harvest their own food in the hopes that the camps will be self-sufficient. Cultivation was very difficult on the arid grounds of which the camps were settled upon. 
Instead, their food was mass-produced, army-style grub. They knew that attempting to escape was in no way an option, since guards walked to the perimeters 24-7 and had been instructed to shoot down anyone who tried to leave. You can hardly call having most of your civil rights stripped of you freedom. Despite being treated so horribly, a multitude of men desired to prove their loyalty to the United States, and so they petitioned Congress to allow them to fight in the war. This created the 442nd, an army battalion that is still, to this day, the most decorated for their bravery in the European front. These troops were the, mo were the best fighters the U.S. had, and were able to successfully complete many missions the other troops couldn't. The 442nd's motto was Go for Broke which reflects the Japanese tenacious personality. In early 1945, the last internment camp shut down and internees were allowed to return to their homes. This wasn't exactly convenient for many of the Japanese Americans as they had previously sold their properties. After all of this unnecessary and inconsiderate treatment, not a single Japanese was ever proven to be a threat to the country, much less a spy. While many decide, while well, men Many decided to rebuild their lives in the United States. Some of them were unforgiving and flew over to Japan, resenting America for her outrageous and prejudiced hatred towards so many perfectly innocent people.